I try to recreate the past in every instrument because the past is most inspiring to me. I'm trying to bring it back in the same enjoyment I feel when I hear broke music or I see a broke painting. So when someone chooses, say, a lid painting and they choose something that I like from the period, it tremendously does inspire me. If they pick a beautiful painting and it's going on the lid, it, it helps me create the sound, the whole feel of it, and especially if it matches the air of the harpsichord. I rarely recreate the same painting because variety is the spice of life. And to break away from it, I do go on motorcycle rides. I do like to get out in nature. When you're painting and you are outdoors, you imagine the outdoors as what colors and what technique would I use to paint this? So that's a synergistic effect. In the beginning, I conceptualize the whole thing as much as I can and the color of it, because the lid painting has to match the color of the harpsichord. The stand has to go with the instrument, and that is definitely important, totally inspiring me to create the instrument. I love oil painting. You mix multiple paints on the brush, and the brush does the work. I don't use a wet on wet technique. I paint the sky with some cloud shapes, and then when that's dry, it's a permanent fixture but when I put other details over it or washes or glazes or transparencies, it's like adding layers in Photoshop. If I don't like what I'm putting on the second day, oil's so forgiving, I can just wipe it away. And it adds a depth, it adds a detail that is hard to describe. Usually I work in quietness. I think the music can be distracting when building, especially in the shop. I wear to protect my hearing, headphones, because the, the tools are quite loud a lot. But when I paint, I usually listen to music and I listen to the period music, like if a French soundboard painting, I'm playing Luli. It's almost like when you do brush strokes, you're dancing in miniature to the music. You see the curly cues, you see the curved legs or the gold. We need that music to take us out of the modern era and to transport us. It is better with music at least painting. It also makes the time go quicker and it's easier. But there's a part of me that thinks part of my brain is listening to music and it's not focusing on the painting. But I actually think the spirit of the soundboard is better with music. When I'm painting, time flies more than building. Except when I'm building, I almost welcome repetitive tasks like stringing an instrument because when you're doing something repetitive, time really flies. As a builder, I built maybe 50 instruments. There's always that one time where your mind will slip and you will make a mistake that you've never made before. <laughs> and you'll think, I never thought I could make that mistake. That's when time really slows down because you have to figure out how to correct it and what to do. If my painting isn't going well, I feel awful. And when I started painting, sometimes I get this anxiety like writer's cramp, I can't paint. But it's almost the process of doing it carries you forward. Smell is very important. As a kid, during art lessons, I walked into the studio in the suburbs of Chicago in Elmhurst and the smell of linseed oil and oil paints, it brings you back. I know my parents had oil paints. Something about that smell is so unique. It's almost indescribable. Strangely comforting, it just makes you pause and think. The other smell that is great, the smell of cut wood. Gosh, have you ever walked into a hardware store and you're like, ah, wood, wood, wood smells great. Smell when working is a reinforcement that you're on the right track. The wood smell is, it's where my purpose is, where I was meant to be. When I smell linseed oil and turpentine, those two combinations, it's very reassuring and you feel very inspired. <laughs>